Good morning, class. You are welcome to our literature class this morning. FS3 with you here is Mrs. Uremba G.I. We are going to look at one of the non-African poems poem this morning, titled Crossing the Bar. Crossing the Bar is written by Alfred Lord Tennyson. Let's go through the poem. Sunset, an evening star, and one clear call for me. And may there be no morning of the bar when I put out to sea. But such a tide as moving seems asleep, too full for sound and foam. When that withdrew from out the boundless deep, turns again home. Three light and evening bell, and after dark the dark, and may there be no sadness of farewell when I embark. For though from out are born of time and place, the flood may bear me far, I hope to see my pilot face to face when I have crossed the bar. This is the poem. But before we go into the analysis, we need to know a little about the poet. Alfred Lord Tennyson was born in August 16, 16th, 1809. He was a poet laureate of Great Britain and Ireland. He excelled at short lyrics such as break, 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 tears, I do tears, and crossing the bar. Most of his poems were based on classical mythological themes such as Ulysses. He died in October 6, 1892, as I said earlier. So the next thing we are look at now is the subject matter, the subject matter of this uh, poem. The poem Crossing the Bar is philosophical. It is a poem of med that meditates on death. The poet, through a careful use of metaphor, exhibit his mindset towards death. He accepts the transition from life to death with a cool and composed manner. The poem contains four stanzas of four lines each with an ab ab rhyme scheme. The poem makes use of metaphor of a sailor crossing the sand bar between the tidal area and the sea to present a human being passing from life to existence beyond death. Now, having known this, we are going to look at the line by line analysis of this poem. In line one to four, which is the first stanza, we see highlights like the temporal setting of the poem. The awareness of the one clear call, an indication of end of period. The temporal setting of this poem is Victorian England. It is also the evening hour when the sun is setting. Evening hour, as we all know, is a time when most people are expected to retire back home after a hard day job and probably reflect on the day's exploit. So in this stanza one, the poet points out that it is the end of day of the day, sunset and evening star, which apparently is a reference of being in a twilight the evening star points out his way and he feels the clear call of death. 
Now let's look at stanza two, which is line five to eight. In stanza two, we see such highlights as the poet, the poet long for a fair or clement weather in the course of his impeding sea voyage. He looks forward to a peaceful tide. That will be seen in line three. The poet longs for a favorable condition for a full tide that will make the climbing of the sand bar easy and eventful. There is also the affirmation that the voyage is a homeward one, though extraterrestrial in nature. By this, we mean that it is eternal. So, he also describes his passage to the afterlife in this stanza too. Here he looks forward to a smooth sail without any barrier. In this stanza too, he looks forward to a peaceful transition. Now we are going to look at the next stanza. The next stanza, which is line 9 to 12. Line 9 to 12, we can, we can bring them together. The, the third and the fourth line can be brought together. Here in the last two stanzas, this is the which is stanza three to four. In the last two stanzas, the poets point out that the time has finally come and he is relaxed about it because it is a moment away from darkness. That is to say, he expects to see his pilot, that is God. He said it is a moment away from darkness and he expects to see his pilot that is his god face to face so he expects no sadness no sorrow and no mourning so these are the things we need to know or all we need to know about the line to line analysis of the poem now we're going to look at the themes that are bound in this poem we have about four themes in this poem the first one is the theme of death, old age, hope, and humor. We are going to look at them one by one as time permits us. The theme of death. It is about someone realizing the approach of his death. We all know that we all know that death will enable one to see his God face to face if he has done well while on earth. So the poet here was of the opinion or was pessimistic that his death will enable him to see his God face to face. That's his pilot. The poem presents a poetic person who faces his apparent coming death with courage and hope. And so in this crossing the bar, it focuses on the crossing or transition from life to death. The poet makes use of metaphor and images to bring home his point. The use of expressions such as sunset, evening star, reflect the poet's eternal death. The poet talk, takes his impending death with a kind of placid and acceptable attitude. He, however, expresses a desire for a peaceful death when he notes, and I quote, and there be no mourning of the bar. Also, he will die sailing at a high tide when the sand bar is buried way beneath the water. His attitude here reflects his internal contentment and resignation to the natural process of life and death. And he concludes that, there should be no sorrow, no sadness, no farewell upon his death. He also believes that he will meet his pilot face to face. And as I said earlier on, his pilot here means his God. All right, now the next theme we are going to look at is the theme of old age. The theme of old age. Normally in life, Death comes with old age. The sunset and evening of one's life is old age. 
The poem reminds us that the evening of the speaker's life is in full swing. As at the time he wrote the poem, Tennyson was about 80 years old. He was sick and aboard the ship, and he had that premonition that night or death is fast approaching. The beautiful thing about old age, however, is that it comes with its fair share of wisdom. Hence, the poet's old age with wisdom is able to know that it is not an end but a beginning, and it is inevitable. The next thing we are going to look at is the theme of hope. The poet hopes that his approaching death will not be attended by any form of agitation or pain, and that is in stanza 4. He hopes that his death will be a relatively peaceful one. He preaches a calm acceptance of death and dying since they are inevitable. Some people today, when they are about dying, they are crying. He approaches his own death with hope because he was optimistic that he was going to meet his pilot face to face. That is his God. The next thing we have to talk about is the theme of humor. But because of time, we are going to skip that and I encourage us to read it up in your exam focus. Therefore, we are going straight to look at the structure of the poem the structure of the poem structurally as i said before now the poem is of a 16 line uh, uh, of a 16 lines and it is divided into four stanzas the fourth and the third stanzas are linked they have a few devices in common both beginning with reference to time, which are actually figurative. The rhyme scheme is an alternate rhyme scheme of A B A B C D C D E F E F and G A G A. The length of the poem, however, varies. We are going to look at the language and the style. The language and the style. The poet made use of the following poetic devices. The first one there is the metaphor, which, which is a direct comparison of two things. The poem is one long metaphor that offers a meditation on the inevitability of death. Reading the poem, one would think that the journey in question is on a proposed voyage. A close reading revealed that it is to the land of death. It is the land of the dead and not actually on any proposed voyage. Phrases and ideas in the poem are used metaphorically. The idea of sunset and evening stars refers to old age. And I quote, tree light in line 9 also has the same metaphorical meaning. Evening bell also suggests the fact that the time is up. After the evening bell comes dark is a metaphor meaning death. The second de device is used here is the symbolism. Some of the instances of metaphorical representation in the poem is also symbolically re relevant. They are symbolically relevant. Such ones include sunset, evening, and twilight. They are symbolic of both the poetic personage, personage's old age as well as imminent death. The dark in line 10 is symbolic of death. The bar that the poets look forward to crossing is what divides life and death. The third poetic device as can be seen in this poem is personification. Morning of the bar is used. The bar does not moan. That is, morning here means crying. The bar does not moan. It does not have life. Another one is, but such a tide as moving seems asleep. It's only living things that sleep. This is sleep here. Tide here is uh, personified. The flood that bears me far is a metaphor. 
another device that can be seen here is repetition there's a repetition in evening others are anophoric in nature when in lines 4 7 12 and 16 which is used to emphasize the inevitability of death when there is repeated severally and it is used to emphasize the inevitability of death this brings us to the end of the lesson remember the topic crossing the bar by lord Tennyson. and as i said earlier on it is one of our non-african poems i encourage us to go back to our exam focus read and master the poem have a good mastery of the poem so that you'll be able to answer questions correctly because you should be able as i have always said should be able to quote one or two lines of the poem to portray your points when answering questions on things or poetic devices thank you very much i will also want to drop my questions number one Give a detailed account of the poem and comment on the appropriateness of its title. Number two, discuss any three poetic devices used in the poem. And lastly, discuss the theme of old age in the poem. Thank you.